Hi, this is Gary Rosenzweig. Back in 1997, I bought one of these. In 2007, I bought one of these. Let's compare them on this episode of MacMos Now. This is a Newton Message Pad 2000. I got it in 1997. It cost me about $400. It weighs about a pound and a half and has a huge writing screen that's just black and white. But it does a lot of things the iPhone actually still doesn't do. One of the things it does is handwriting recognition. You can take the stylus that comes with it and you can actually write something on it. Like that. And we'll convert it for you into text or keep it as a drawing if you want. So you basically use this as a tablet computer, just writing on it and taking notes. Matter of fact, that's what it does best. Now the downsides of the message pad compared to the modern day iPhone is it only has about 4 megs of memory. That's right, megs of memory. So there's not much room on it here to store MP3s. As a matter of fact, there's no headphone jack out. So it's not really a, an MP3 player at all. But it does have a lot of neat things that the iPhone doesn't have. One thing is it's got two card slots. So you can add things like modems and extensions to it. There's also a serial port at the top, which is how you dock it, but you could also add things like a keyboard to it. In fact, this one came with a keyboard. So you could type and keep notes even quicker than handwriting at a conference, say, or in a class. Now the battery life on these things was excellent. I can't remember exactly what the original battery life was, but I know if you can get this refurbished, uh, you can get about 40 hours of battery life out of it. And it even comes with a battery pack that allows you to put four AA batteries into it so you can take it traveling and not worry about forgetting the charger or something. The uh, other thing about this device that is really big is the fact that it supports third party software. It did that right from the get go. So people wrote all sorts of software. As a matter of fact when Apple discontinued the machine in 1998 a strong developer community kept writing new software and producing new peripherals for the device so a lot of people still use it today. Now the iPhone of course is a lot lighter and a lot prettier and it has a ton of memory. I mean this one's the standard 8 gigabyte one. You can get one now that's 16 gigs. And with the headphone out jack that means it's a very useful MP3 player and media player of all kinds as you can play movies and things on it. It has a high resolution color screen as opposed to just the monochrome screen of the Newton. So this is a much more useful device in today's multimedia world. But where the iPhone falls down is the extendability third party applications aren't here yet although they're coming but it looks like Apple is going to restrict them and basically get to say which ones get produced and which ones don't. Also of course there's really very little extra hardware besides speaker systems and such. What would be nice is to be able to have an external keyboard on this to be able to take notes and also of course to be able to have a variety of different hardware applications that maybe Apple hasn't even thought up yet. Well, it's pretty natural to want to compare these two things. I mean, they're both small computing devices by Apple. But this one's really more similar to a tablet PC. And this one is a combination of a phone and an MP3 player. So as time goes on and third-party apps come to the iPhone, this will probably do everything that the Newton Message Pad did. But it's nice to take a look back and see what was there in the past and see how far we've come today. What's most interesting when trying to compare these two devices is how close the Newton Message Pad is to the iPhone in many respects. And it's 14 years older. It just shows you how advanced the Message Pad was back when it came out in 1993. It was also interesting to me when doing this podcast to see that the coolness factor was still there for the Newton Message Pad. It still seemed like this really cool device and I want to use it for something. If you've got a Newton Message Pad, I'd like to hear from you. Leave a comment to this podcast at the MacMost.com website and let me know what your favorite feature of the Newton Message Pad was and why you think it may in some ways be better than the iPhone. Until next time, this is Gary Rosenzweig with MacMost Now. <music>